Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. July 13th, Stanley Dale. Stanley Dale was an Australian who first visited New Guinea while serving in the Army during World War II. When he first saw the high mountain ranges of the interior, he set his mind to return and bring the message of God's love to the Yali people who lived in those remote areas. When Stanley first approached the Yali, they shot him, but he didn't die. Another time, they shot arrows at him. He pulled the arrows out of his body and broke them over his knee. Dale knew that if God had sent him someplace, God would take care of the details. On this date, in 1960, Dale set out for his third attempt at missionary work in New Guinea and Indonesia. God guides the bold man willing to take action. It took a long time for any outsider to find the Yali people. Hidden deep among the ridges and valleys of unexplored New Guinea, these hostile tribes lived in Stone Age conditions and worshipped the mystical spirits of Kembu. Climate, terrain, language barriers, and danger of attack kept anyone from daring to explore the area until 1960 when Stanley Dale arrived. Dale and his partner Bruno de Lu first scouted the land by plane and looked for a space to build an airstrip. Then they boated and hiked back into the area. With them came five natives from a neighboring friendly tribe called Dani and two guides from Balinga, the village they were heading toward. At the last moment, one of the guides named Sui ran ahead to warn his people about the strange beings who were on their way. Dale and Delu finally stood at the edge of a pass, looking down a ridge swarming with armed strangers. Hands on his hips, Dale eyed them unabashedly. With only a moment's hesitation, he held up his palms in a sign of peace and started moving, then running straight downhill toward the crowd. Natives shouted in alarm, some ran away, and a few brave men stood their ground. Sui, the messenger guide, did his best to explain to his kinsmen that these men were not dangerous, and Dale was able to interact with the men and establish a sort of relationship. Next, Dale pressed on to investigate the potential airstrip site he had spotted earlier from the plane. He descended into the valley and headed straight for the enemy of the Balinga warriors, the Yabi and Kobak tribes. The Balinga warriors behind him screamed battle cries and followed with weapons raised, but Dale kept going. The Yabi and Kobak warriors screeched their own cries and held their weapons ready. Dale had no way to know of the long-standing rivalry between these tribes. But he knew he was facing a challenge at that moment, and it was not in his character to back down. So he pressed on, oblivious to the fact that the Balinga tribe was slowing to a shocked halt. The Balinga tribe had been bluffing. Dale reached the lowest part of the valley, and armed warriors lined the ridges in front of him and behind him. Alone, Dale crossed the river that divided the two territories and headed for the other warriors. The Yabi and Kobek warriors stood stunned. But suddenly, they were struck by the impression that this magnificent, courageous entity must have appeared to bring peace. A voice suddenly issued a command. Don't kill him! Warriors relaxed their weapons, and the crowd disappeared, and when Dale reached the bank, only a few were left standing on the bank. These men greeted Dale openly. When the rest of Dale's group saw it was safe, they all crossed the river to join him. 
That was the moment the messenger Sui was finally able to communicate to Dale that these two tribes were at war. With authority that only God could enforce, Dale ordered Sui to tell the Balinga and Yabi war chiefs that it was time to make peace. Sui hesitated, but Dale gripped his shoulders and sent him on his way. Sui rallied the leaders from his village and the enemies. With Delu praying behind him, Dale used his interpreters to talk with the war chiefs. Finally, the people who had just been ready to let their arrows fly at one another grasped arms in forgiveness. Hebrews 13 verse 6 says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? With God leading you today, what is your action step? God guides the bold man willing to take action. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.